Yeah. Well, we went through some really great times, and I think the team handled those beautifully. And then we hit some rough spots. And uh, without the seniors slash captains slash leadership, I mean, the team leadership was not on the court at all. They they each had to do a little bit of, of that. And, uh, you know, it, we had a lot of adversity. We weren't passing well. We, we couldn't get into a rhythm with our offense at times in that match. And they had to just keep keep grinding it out and I think I'm most proud of that that they they just decided you know I'm we we aren't going to have our leaders our captains and we have to find a way and boy that's pretty special from a coaching perspective to have a team on the court decide that they're going to have they're they're going to have to make some changes and I think Hardesty really stepped up with her game maybe she doesn't say a word on the court I mean and if you if she says it nobody hears it but she led with you know, second in blocks, I mean, I'm sorry, second in digs, hitting percentage higher than I've ever seen her, and she never came off the floor. Five aces, led the team in aces. What a consistent, complete player. I mean, gosh, coaches love that stuff. And she, so she led with her game. I think Ipley, Stephanie Ipley, our setter, is leading with her uh, as a setter, with her you know, more vocal. That's one thing she's been working on, is being more vocal on the court, more demanding of her team, more commanding, like a like a quarterback essentially and point guard she is really starting to develop in that role i love the road trips i don't like meeting in the bus at 4 a.m but uh the team is a lot of fun to be around they're absolutely hilarious uh they like to make the coaches laugh um we in, we get into conversations that you would never really get into when you're everyone's at their own place here in College Station, to tell you the truth. And so they're really fun, and and it also is good a good team time. You know, I've talked a lot about that in the past, where the bonding is there, the experiences are there. We try to go and do something that's fun uh, for the team, even if it's a small a small thing. Um, we we try to do something that can bring them all together. Is it to help their, their volleyball game as well on the court as well oh absolutely okay. you know that volleyball is such an interactive sport on the court they're, they're they're rarely more than 10 feet apart from each other and they're not running up and down the a court or a field they're right in each other's face all the time so expressions and words and all of those things really matter and I know the people don't really realize it until you're out there and experiencing it with the stress and the pressures and the expectations these girls have of not only themselves but of each other there's a lot going on with the dynamics on a court. So the more you can get a group together, especially college women, and get them on a in good chemistry, feeling good with each other, and where they stand with each other is is a huge bonus. You know, and it, for it to be public that we're top 25 is it's nice. It's a it's nice recognition. I've always thought that we had some um, overrated teams, so to speak, in the top 25 in the because it's early and nobody really knows, but I've always thought that we were definitely that quality. We're definitely that quality. I don't, I don't have any question about that. And so to get that recognition is kind of nice, although now the target's more on our back than it was before, and, and we just have to kind of forget about all that stuff. You know, we already know what, what our goal is, what we're focused on, and there's so many things you can let get in your head and, and distract you. And that's one thing that we're, we really very rarely talk about on the team. Um, occasionally it'll be a little slide re snide remark about not being ranked. But we know where we stand with ourselves and with our opponents. And so we just try to keep that focus. Yeah, Iowa State as a former Big 12 opponent is, is really a tough one for us. There, we have a lot of history between the two programs, and that always churns up some drama, you know. And uh, they're they're very good. They're they're well coached. Uh, we're going to have to really be great blocking against them, and our serving and passing game ha cannot cannot let up because we if we don't pass well against them, they transition so quickly on their defense that. We'll, we could get ourselves in trouble that way. Uh, I don't know much about Milwaukee, to tell you the truth, and we play them back, those two teams back to back. So we're not even, we don't get but an hour rest. So we have to use our conditioning that we've been in all summer and uh, make sure that it's top notch. Uh, and I have to use a lot of players if, if I can against um, both of those teams. And then Sunday, um, Saturday night against Iowa, they may be the tallest team we face all season, maybe other than Florida. And uh, they are, uh, have a new coach somewhat of a couple of years and uh, 
they're gonna they're gonna present some problems at the net. There's no question. They they've got kid. They're right now as a team hitting in the 300s as a team, and that's that's a really high percentage for a team. And so uh, there's just you know both days we're gonna have our hands really full with great blockers, amazing servers coming at us, and uh, having to really play a consistently strong, uh, tough game.